find a grave can be a good resource when you're tracing your family tree. Notice that I said can be. There are some things about find a grave that aren't obvious when you're using the site. And not knowing or understanding how find a grave actually works can lead you to some incorrect conclusions about your ancestors. So here are some things that you absolutely positively need to know about find a grave, plus a couple of bonus tips for my favorite ways of making even more discoveries on the site. The first thing to know about find a grave is that it is not complete. As of the recording of this video, there are more than 226 million memorials on find a grave. Now that's a lot, but just because you do a search and you don't find your ancestor, it doesn't mean that your ancestor's place of burial isn't known. It could easily be that they just don't have a memorial yet on find a grave. Even when find a grave says that a cemetery is 100% photographed, that isn't necessarily the case. If you've ever looked at a cemetery page, you might have noticed where it says that it's 77% photographed or 100% photographed. And a lot of people think that that's referring to how many photographs there are of the entire cemetery. It's actually referring to the percentage of find a grave memorials that have photographs. So if a cemetery has a thousand burials and there are only 100 memorials for it on find a grave, but all 100 of those have photographs, find a grave would say that that cemetery is 100% photographed. So just because you don't see your ancestor listed in a particular cemetery on find a grave, don't assume that he or she isn't actually buried there. That leads me to my second point, and that is find a grave is not a definitive source. Well, what do I mean by that? There isn't a review process for memorials that are created or information that is added to find a grave. Those memorials are created mostly by individual volunteers, with some memorials created by genealogy societies or historical societies, sometimes even cemeteries or funeral home directors. What that means is that the source of this information that is going on to the find a grave memorials come from a variety of places. It could be from the tombstone itself, it could be from cemetery records, death certificates, obituaries, or it could be from great aunt Gertrude's rather faulty memory about where her great-grandparents are buried. There are even instances where people have created find a grave memorials because, well, I just know they, they have to be there. Where this really becomes an issue is when memorials are connected by relationship. There isn't a review process. You don't have to submit proof of how people are related before you start connecting them on find a grave. So when you're looking at a memorial and you see that somebody has their parents attached to them, their spouses, their children attached right there on that memorial, that's a really good clue, but you really need to follow up with additional research. Otherwise, you could be adding a lot of people to your family tree who don't really belong there. Also, just because someone has children listed on their find a grave memorial doesn't necessarily mean that all of their children are listed there on the find a grave memorial. It could be that some of the children either don't have find a grave memorials or they just haven't been attached. That's something else that you really need to keep in mind with find a grave. Even if you don't see someone listed as a relation on that particular memorial, don't necessarily assume that all of the other relations don't have find a grave memorials. It easily could be that they do, they've just never been attached. Here's one of my favorite things to do when I'm researching on find a grave. When I find a memorial that I'm interested in, I look over on the right hand side of that memorial and look in the section that says, find more memorials in. I like to start by looking for memorials in that cemetery with people who have that same surname. Now, this doesn't mean that all of the people in that cemetery with that surname are related, but it does give me more memorials to take a look at that I can evaluate. If it's a more unusual surname, I'll actually click to see other surnames in that town or surnames who are buried in that county. It's a great way of finding potentially more relatives. 
One very important thing to know about Find a Grave is that its search can be a little, shall we say, interesting. It's so easy to add too much to your search on Find a Grave, actually to the point that you don't get the memorial that you're really looking for. Here's an example. I was looking for a memorial for a woman named Alice Clotten. I was confident that she was born in 1853, but I didn't know exactly when she died. But I had her on the 1930 census. So I searched for her, putting the, her death date as after 1930. The last place that I had Alice was in that 1930 census in Lawrence County, Ohio. So I figured that that would be a good place to start looking to see where she's buried. I did that search and got zero results. Look what happens when I redo the search, but take out a key piece of information. Remember, I don't know when Alice died. So if I take out her death date, look at the results I get. Alice Clotten, born in December 1853, with death date unknown. Putting any kind of date for the year of death will eliminate all of the memorials where the death date is unknown. If you don't get the results that you're looking for, try playing around with your search terms. Taking out a date of birth, taking out the date of death, maybe playing around with the place of burial. When I start a search on Find a Grave, I typically start with the person's first name, their surname, date of birth, date of death, and if I'm pretty confident about where they're buried, I'll enter that place of burial. If you're researching a surname that has a lot of different spellings, you can do a special search called a wildcard search, which helps you pick up a lot more of those variant spellings. Down in the description, I'll have a link to a video that I did about how to do wildcard searches. Now here's a bonus tip. Instead of searching directly on the Find a Grave website, search the Find a Grave index on either Ancestry or Family Search. Searching that collection on either of those sites will give you a much more flexible search option. Just be sure that when you're searching on either Ancestry or Family Search and you come up with a result that you're interested in, click through to see the actual memorial on Find a Grave. Find a Grave can be a great resource for your genealogy. If you want to find even more about your family tree, check out the video that's on screen right now and go make some great discoveries.